Good morning. Rise up in hope today. It is Wednesday and boy, I wish I could be outside with you again. Yesterday was so much fun, but it's still dark and I'm going to just go at seven o'clock and rise up in hope today. Our devotional is called Embracing the Season. What is it? Embracing the season, what is it? We have been studying Exodus 16, but before we go there, I want to read Isaiah 55, beginning in verse 8 through 11, okay? It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater so is my word that goes out from my mouth it will not return to me empty but will accomplish what i desire and achieve the purpose for which i have sent it there are seasons that God sends to us that have purpose that, that we don't actually want to receive. And we would easily say return to sender. Not that one. Anything but that. I mean, we've all been through times. And I think we all can safely say that if we could turn around the last eight months, we would definitely have returned it to the very place where it was birthed and give it back. But we don't have that liberty we have to embrace the season and if god says to embrace the season we know that he's good and he's in it so we're going to look now at exodus chapter 16 the scripture and the verse that says what is it they were confused too even back then and i want to just say that sometimes learning to trust god completely takes discipline it takes discipline when your plans are hijacked. Yesterday we talked about it. Many things got hijacked in this house and I just embraced it and I surrendered it. And I wish I had time to tell you about all the goodness of God that just literally showed up. But I want to get to the scripture in Exodus 16. We are going to begin reading in verse 11. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Verse 13, that evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. Thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Each one is to gather as much as he needs. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered as much as he needed. I want to back up to verse 15. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? The study app here says manna appeared on the ground each day as thin flakes like frost. The people gathered it, ground it like grain, and made it un into honey tasting pancakes pancakes the dew on the ground when it was ground it was pancakes for the israelites the manna was a gift it came every day and was just what they needed uh, it satisfied their temporary physical need in john 6 48 through 51 jesus compares himself to manna Christ is our daily bread who satisfies our eternal spiritual needs. So when you have time, I want you to read, I encourage you to read John 6, 48 through 51, and, and compare 
manna to Jesus Christ. Because when we have Jesus Christ and when we believe him, when we receive him, and when we begin to walk with him with our surrendered life, many beautiful things happen. Without the surrender, you're not going to get the fullness of Holy Spirit. There is a surrender, but that's for another day. Today is, what is it? They didn't know what it was. And then when, when Moses said to them, then they had to make a choice and believe. And they did by making it into pancakes. And for 40 years, we talked about this season was long. It, it was 40 years that, that the Lord supplied daily. And so sometimes when God sends us things, we have to be careful not to immediately push it off to the side. We have to ask and pray. And it's not always things. God sends people to help us. Sometimes they're not the person that we thought would come. And we have to be careful. We have to be careful because as we read in Isaiah, God's ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. So when people come to help, when you get a phone call that could be help, don't discard it. Don't assume. Break off assumption if it's in your heart. And be childlike with wonder and ask, God, is this you? Is this person sent by you, God, today? Is this where my supply will come from? And then God will show you. And sometimes, oftentimes it's going to be yes, because it's not going to come the way we think or the way we would have imagined it. But it doesn't mean it's not from God. So be careful to return to sender before you ask, before you, before you abort the plan of God. You want the fullness of the plan of God. And it just may be in it in in a different way, in a different way. I want us now to go to Luke. I couldn't help but go to Luke chapter one. And here we're going to have two very different, what is it? And two very different perspectives. We're going to begin in Luke one, and we're going to talk about Zechariah and Mary. Zechariah and Mary, and we're going to begin reading in verse eight. So Luke one, Verse 8, once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. So this is a very ordinary, customary, regular day. And watch what happens. Verse 11, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and he was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never, he is never to take wine or other fermented drinks and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Verse 18, listen to how Zechariah questions the what it is. Zechariah asked the angel, how can this be? How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. So Zechariah questioned and he needed more evidence. And we often question and need more evidence. And God silenced him for nine months because of that. 
And now I want to read on. It says, Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long at the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. And then I'm going to skip down and go to Mary's experience, because she had a very different response to the what is it. It says here, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel, it seems like Gabriel's very busy here, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Now, Zechariah was troubled as well. And let's read on verse 30. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. What is this? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. And Mary's response is the response that I want to have. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. It's interesting the word barren was here. And the word barren desert was in Exodus 16. So here in a barren place, a desert place, God brings something, something incredibly special. And he does it in the way that only God can do it. And we have two different responses. Zechariah needed more evidence and it wasn't settled in his heart. Mary said, let it be unto me according to your will. We all are human. We all can look at every situation that comes, every season that comes our way, and we have two choices. We can embrace it, or we can avoid it. We can grumble about it. We can complain about it. But what a beautiful display of two different responses. Two different responses to the what is it. The Israelites were blessed because they took an action to believe that this dew was food for them. Zechariah, God blessed him. Even though he, he was silent, he still had a child in his old age. And Mary, well, we know the story of Mary. and We know the birth of Jesus. And we know God's redemption plan. And it's all so good. And it's so beautiful to, to be reading this and having the Holy Spirit highlight this. So I just wrote down a couple of notes as we finish our devotional today on what is it. Number one, what is the what is it in your life? What is the season that is looking a whole lot different to you than you thought it would. What is that? And if you are in Christ, if you are one of God's kids that he loves and he's crazy about, then my encouragement, and my suggestion is just to take it before him and ask him, Holy Spirit, I need your wisdom during this season. I need your strategy. I need whatever you have. And I don't want to be I don't want to not believe you. I, I want to walk through this with you. And that is where God wants us. If he's brought us a season that is full of things that we'd rather send back, he's in it. And if we fully trust him and surrender yesterday, we said, if we trust, we'll find treasure. So trust him, friends. Trust him. Believe. God is always with us. We who are his, he's with us. 
and we can face anything because as it said in Luke, for nothing is impossible with God. We just need to get really close. Listen really closely so that we know the how. How is this going to go? And what is this going to look like? God, when you send us people, let us be careful not to dismiss them because they didn't, they weren't according to our standards. God, don't let us judge. Ugh, don't let us judge, Lord. Let us trust and believe and not assume anything, but ask you because you want us to ask you, God, is this person from you? Is this the road that you want me to take? It's such good advice just to go to you, God, and ask you about every detail of our lives because you create every moment of every day. So, Lord, I thank you for this devotional on what is it. I thank you that we will have great wisdom in our day today, in the season of this time, in the season of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope this helps somebody today. It surely is helping me to do a lot of soul searching and to look at every, every area of my life where I'm challenged because there are many challenges, but God's in them all. Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow.